In PTC MathCAD, you can perform a linear regression on a data set. Let's take a look at how to do that. Here I am in MathCAD, but I'm going to import some data from Microsoft Excel that means something to me. Here I am in Microsoft Excel, and this is a spreadsheet of some performance of my YouTube channel. So I'm interested in the linear regression for the viewing minutes versus the number of days since the start of my YouTube channel. And after about a thousand days, I was at 7 million viewing minutes. Here you can see a graph of the performance, and I want to find the line that best fits this data. So let's jump back over to PTC MathCAD. The first thing that I'm going to do is to find my origin variable, and this is used to specify the starting index of any matrix that you are using. And so for origin, let me go to the operators. I always like to use the global equals operator, the global definition operator, so that this will use this value throughout the sheet. As a mechanical engineer, I always like to start off with one, as opposed to computer scientists who tend to use the number zero. So let's create a variable for our viewing data. Then I will use the keyboard shortcut of the colon key for the definition operator. To bring in that data, I will go to the input output tab. Here is the read Excel function. And now let's click the browse button. Here is my Excel spreadsheet. Let's click the open button. I'm going to grab the box and make it a little wider. And the first tab of the spreadsheet has five columns of data, but I'm only interested in the days and the minutes. So let's change the columns from A to E instead to C to D. And also I have a header row. I don't care about the header. I don't need that. So let's change the amount of data that I'm bringing in to be rows 2 through 13. That's good. Let me hit the tab key just so it updates the highlighting of what it's going to use. Now I will use the insert button. And so there we have our function listed in here. Now I'm going to take that data and I'm going to extract the two columns to what they mean. And just to show you what this data is, let's evaluate viewing data using the regular equals operator. So the first column is the number of days. The second column is the viewing minutes. Let me delete this. And so let's make a variable days. This is going to be equal to viewing data. I really cannot spell. And then to extract the first column, well, you can get to that from a few different places. If I go to the matrices tables tab, then from the vector and matrix operators, it is, let's see, this one right here, the matrix column operator. You can see that it is the keyboard shortcut of Control, Shift, and C. So I'll choose that, and it'll be column one, and then the actual value for the minutes, well, that is going to be equal to viewing data. This time I'll use the keyboard shortcut, Control, Shift, C, and this will be the second column. So that's the data that I want to use. Let's see what that data looks like in a chart component. I'm going to give my, myself some space up here for what I want to do. So let me start off the chart component down here. And let's go back to the math tab. And then chart component. Insert chart component. And for my inputs, I will right click. And we can choose to insert the x-axis expression. And this will be that variable days. Let me click elsewhere in here, and then I can right click and insert my Y axis expression. This will be minutes. And then I will click, and there you can see a preview of the data. Let's make this look a bit better. I will double click on it, and that will take me into the tool for editing the chart component. Let's zoom in here a little bit. First, I'll start with the X axis. And let's change the setup and let's use a user defined range. And right now it's going out to about 1100. I want to extrapolate out. So let's change this to out to 1500 days. And 
change the number of steps to three, and then let's change the formatting of the number to decimal, and I don't need any decimal places, so that looks good. Might as well throw a title on here. This will be the days, and that's good. Now let's go to the Y axis, and once again, let's click on Setup and do a user-defined range, and right now it's going from zero to seven million, and I want to extrapolate out. Let's go to 10 million, and let's use five steps. And let's change the number formatting once again to decimal, and I don't need any decimal places. So there, that is nice and good. Let's change the title of the y-axis to list as minutes. And let's go to our trace, and the color's fine, but let's make the thickness a little bit bigger. And so there you can see what we are getting. That looks good, I'm happy with that. Let's close out of the chart component. The reason I'm putting this in here is that then I'm going to lay over the linear regression of this. Speaking of which, let's scroll back up. And the way that we're gonna do this is we are going to create a variable and use a function called line. Let's go to the functions tab for a moment. And if we go in here, I forget which group it's under, it might be under the curve fitting and smoothing. Here it is, here's the line function. And you can see that it takes two inputs, Vx and Vy, and then it's going to return the coefficients for a line of the form a plus bx that best approximates the data in the vectors. So let's create our variable. I'll call it prediction since we're giving a linear prediction. This is going to be equal to, and for the function, you can either type it in manually, but again, if you are unsure, just click on line. And then we have our two different placeholders. So the X variable is going to be the days that I extracted from the Excel data. And then the other one is going to be the minutes. Now let's evaluate this. Let me click off to the side and prediction equals. And so here you see the two different values. And the first value that we have up here is the y-intercept. And right now this is about negative 1.3 million. Let's scroll down to the graph to see what that means. It means that if we're going to fit a line through the data, it's going to intersect the y-axis at about down here. It's going to be actually a negative value, that negative 1.3 million. And then the second value in here in the return of the line function is going to be the slope, the rise over run of the line that best fits through that data. And this has a value of about 6,800. So that means I'm getting on average 6,800 viewing minutes per day on my channel. And so I can already tell that this number is a little off. Back in my summer pre-peak, I was getting about 300 hours a day. This corresponds to what about uh, 110, 115 hours a day. Uh, so again, these are the numbers that I'm getting out of the linear regression. In order to plot this information on my graph, okay, so let's create our range variable. And right now I've got my graph going out to about 1500 days. So let's do range is equal to zero and then comma. And let's do a step of every two days and out to a total of 1500. And then for our function, our function, I'll call it linear prediction, as a function of x is going to be equal to, so again, this value here, this is the y-intercept, so that's going to be the prediction. And then I can use the matrix operator. If I go to the matrices tab, underneath vector matrix operators, it is this one over here, the matrix index, and the keyboard shortcut is the left bracket. So this it's going to be the value of prediction sub one, and then we're going to add to this the value of prediction 
and then this time I'll use the keyboard shortcut two and this is going to be multiplied by that value of X so now we're able to graph our function here let's scroll down a little bit and so now we'll add in a couple of other additional inputs let's right click insert the x-axis expression and here we're going to have range as our x variable and then for our second y variable this is going to be equal to linear prediction I write really long function names and the input to the function is going to be range and so let's click outside and the graph updates so there you can see the linear prediction and again our y-intercept you can see here it is negative and based on the values we can see that we're getting quite a bit of divergence between the linear regression and the actual performance here but you can see what the prediction is once again we can double click on the chart component to bring up the editor and maybe I want to change the formatting of the second trace let's go there instead I want to use the red color and for the style of the line let's use some dashes and once again increase the thickness a little bit and now we can close out and so that is how you can use MathCAD in order to perform a linear regression and then use it in a chart component I hope you enjoyed this video for more information please visit www.creowindshield.com if you learned something from this video please give it a thumbs up and if you like this video please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded thank you very much